interesting name. Okay. Uh, meeting minutes are approved. Okay. So the next item, um, continuing, uh, I think from our last month's meeting, uh, we had met with, uh, we, we have been given the privilege to offer our insight to A5, who's been charged with doing um, some branding for the village. And I think tonight you guys uh, want to present some of the things that you guys have come back with. Is, is I want to just say, if I go ahead 30 seconds worth and let John and Lizzie take over, then um, we've had meetings every Friday, okay. uh, checking meetings about 30 minutes usually. A lot of progress. We've had community input from all the community groups we talked about. I think you did an interview. I had a couple of other interviews. So tonight you're going to see some results okay. and then get some additional feedback and talk about the process. Okay. So I'll turn it over to John with that. And, uh, Follow on either screen. Yeah, we're definitely in we're definitely in a, a draft uh, spot right now, and uh, we'll just there's a few slides here I'm going to skip over, but just in case, want to make sure you knew where we were going. Lizzie, are you doing that? <laughs> I'm doing that. Can you see me? You could see it change size. It's yeah. yeah it, it's, oh. uh, it's, I didn't realize. Let Josh, let Josh control it. <laughs> Let, let Josh control it, Lizzie. Oh, stop <laughs> screen sharing. Right. This Should is all meant to lull you into sense of complacency. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, Pete. Josh is Josh is going to control it. Okay. Okay. They got they got other things on the agenda, and Ryan said we got to get out of here before four in the morning. Now, it said yeah, as long as you're done by four, we're good. Four a.m. Right. Four yeah. Yeah. So, all right, Josh. Go ahead. So um, we want to get your, we're going to tell you what we heard, but we want to get your feedback on some things, some positioning, uh, some tagline, uh, preliminary tagline ideas, and, and we're going to be rolling into the graphic identity, the logo. So we want to give you some sense of, of what has been done in other places and, and get some things about what you like and maybe don't like. Uh, and then um, what we'll do, what we're planning on right now, again, working with Jay and Josh is to launch in January. Mm. Um, so we'll be meeting with the PR committee next week too, and then coming back and doing the graphic identity in early November. So go ahead, Josh. Uh, and just a quick reminder about branding and marketing, right? We're gonna be working on marketing and communications. We're gonna be working on the brochure with you guys, but the branding is really that framework or that story uh, that guides um, uh, everything that you do from a communication standpoint. So it's visual, it's verbal, and it's written, and it really encapsulates or encompasses, uh, you know, the and the story of the community. A little bit of past, a lot of present, and and, and a lot of future as well. Um, and we want to make it so that it uh, is compelling, and that it draws people in from a resident perspective, resident retention and attraction, from an economic development perspective, and uh, to the extent that we're bringing in visitors or want to bring in more visitors. Uh, that's the brand framework. The marketing side of things, which of course we'll work with you on in a number of, of different deliverables over time, is really that um, uh, the actions, right? So the, the brochure is um, uh, uh, will utilize the brand and the brand story, but that's about, you know, that's a marketing tool, it's a communications tool. So um, we're at the branding stage right now, and then once we get that brand story down, then we'll move through onto the marketing and communications. So uh, we, we have a number of deliverables here, and we're gonna start on that here so we can blow past that, but just so you guys know. Um, our branding objectives, what we heard working with staff and, and with you guys in the PR committee, is we wanna create that, a clear, concise, consistent, compelling story for Hampshire. So uh, how do we how do we um, take not just a tagline and not just a logo, but um, create something? Uh, create something. It's bad enough, but I hear myself twice. It's really bad. I think you have to hear it twice. So, <laughs> but we want something that brings true to people, but also has an, a, an aspirational quality to it, a going forward quality. Um, we want to create a stronger, help create a stronger sense of community, um, and and whether that's with residents, economic development, and visitors, and then we're going to do the marketing and communication tools that will tell that story over time. 
Audiences uh, are many and varied. You guys, of course, focused on economic development, so retention and attraction, but uh, we want to look at a broad spectrum of audiences, and that ranges from people who stop uh, at, at you know at a truck stop on I-90 to people who work uh, you know in uh, I mean, businesses here, factories or or, or offices, uh, people who come out to visit a, a pumpkin farm. Um, and everything in between. Obviously, anybody who teaches in a school or attends a school, uh, et cetera. Um, and, and one of the things too that's critical, I think, future from a branding standpoint is defining those boundaries and those corridors. The advantage you guys have is that you've got 47, 20, 72, 90, et cetera. Um, the, the challenge is, of course, you're fairly spread out and not terribly dense. So even I keep as many times as I've been here over decades, I still have to sort of think about where downtown is, right? I still have to think, oh, I got to go to Allen, you know, 20 to Allen Road. And there's no, there's no signage. There's nothing to guide you there. And yes, I know we've heard it from plenty of communities. I everybody's going digital, but people still use, you know, the good old fashioned, you know, signposts to guide their way as well. Um, and either they're using, if they're not using it, to tell them where to go, it confirms or affirms where they want to go, right? Ways is telling me go left at Allen Road. Okay, and you saw this. Plus, it helps you market the game. There's much more you can do than just. Yeah. Lizzie, are you still there? I'm hearing myself twice. So, is is that Josh's fault? Oh, it might be if I unmute, you hear my sound. So I just unmuted about 30 seconds ago. Okay, all right. So let's go through what we heard in the process. Lizzie, do you wanna, do you wanna grab the reins here for this part? Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking over my shoulders if I can see her. Yeah. <laughs> right. Seriously, I don't know if you could see us, but I'm looking over my shoulder as if you're there. Oh yeah, I'm right here. <laughs> Always over your shoulder, John. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in terms of process, um, we began with engagement. We conducted one-on-one -on -one interviews with five stakeholders, and we facilitated focus groups, which I know came up, you were a part of it, um, with PR commission, BDC, department heads, and community leaders. And that included um, the chamber, fire, um, among some, and, and some others. Um, and then we also reviewed positioning of competitor or benchmark communities. You can go to the next one. So what did we hear? Um, in terms of what is best, and I'm just going to read um, a few of these. You can kind of skim it. Um, Hampshire has small town charm and is a few minutes away from modern day conveniences. A lot of people said 20 minutes from everything. The sense of community and place to raise a family. People are here for generations. The parks, open spaces, and open water. It's beautiful just to go for a walk. And if you want to um, kind of scan and then go to the next one, there are a couple pages of these when you're ready, Josh. Um, my kids know people and people know them. There's connectivity with everyone. In one word, Hampshire is goodness. There's a lot of goodness here. Peace and quiet, lifestyle is slower here. Um, the water treatment expansion came up <laughs> a few times. Police came up, uh, village services came up, senior services came up, all is great things going on. Um, the next one. So here, retail potential, come here now and you'll be part of the growth. More rooftops means more growth for your business. People are hungry for commercial and retail growth. Um, the I-90 interchange and truck stop came up quite a bit. Um, ample land to build. Like now is the time. We're on the, the horizon, kind of we're on the brink of something big. Um, next one. Government is friendly. The village board is open-minded. The village will bend over backwards for you here. The diverse tax base in terms of industry, commercial. Um, we're doing more developing than other communities and people are noticing. So we thought that was interesting. Um, and great location. What 
what could be better? There needs to be something for visitors to do. And there were ideas about this. We need to draw people here. People mentioned wine bar, microbrewery, bakery, florist, candy store, old fashioned ice cream store or shop. Um, maybe we host a 50 mile run that ties into natural environment. Maybe we leverage agribusiness as tourism and have a, a quaint B and B. Um, there needs to be a place where people can have experiences, where people can interact and come together. Um, and then a fresh look to the gateway as you come into the downtown. You need to know you're in Hampshire, and I know that's something you're all really aware of and part of our um, work with you. And then I think. Um, that might, okay, so the benchmark communities, these were all communities that came up uh, one or more times in our interviews and focus groups as communities that people look to that are doing good things. Um, you'll see a lot are nearby, some are more national, one is even fictional from It's a Wonderful Life. Um, and you can kind of scan that list and, and get some ideas what people were talking about. All right, I think John, I'll turn it back to you for this yeah, one. Thank, thank you, Lizzie. I just turned over my shoulder again, as you turn around as if you're there. Uh, okay. SWOT analysis, so this again came up from hearing you guys, uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, this is something that we might wanna add to. I don't know that we need to do that tonight, but if you think of some things, uh, then uh, we're always up for adding on. So this is, again, what we've heard from different people. One is there's enthusiasm for uh, growth or responsible growth and progress. Two, oh, Thank well you. done, Josh. Uh, a business-friendly government, a business-friendly environment, the water treatment facility, the I-90 interchange, uh, the room to grow, the quality of life, and community entities working together. Um, somebody said that. From the opportunity side, um, uh, the Crown subdivision, uh, commercial projects that are starting, the downtown streetscape, the, brand, uh, the branding process, uh, the expansion of the intersection of 72 and State Street to the Main Street. I'm not looking at Main Street approach to provide focus for the future of downtown. Uh, some of the weaknesses downtown, a little off the beaten path, uh, the dining and shopping variety, while you know, well, well, there's a good amount. The 20. This is where the 20 minutes away becomes a strength and a weakness, I guess. And uh, the variety. You know, some several people said, "Hey, we need more restaurants. We need more variety." For example, uh, not a prime visitor destination. Again, I'm reminded coming out of here in the fall. There's there's pumpkin patches and things of that nature. So uh, somebody uh, raised the idea of maybe agritourism um, and outdoor recreation. That 50 mile run idea. <clears throat> Uh, which I think, I think Brian, if we don't get out by 6 a.m., we're going on a 50 mile run. Is that what you said? I can do that. Yeah, yeah. let's go. <laughs> um, so, uh, communication with residents, um, uh, high taxes, um, and then from a threat perspective, um, uh, I think these are, these are everywhere, right? COVID 19 and uh, the state of Illinois fiscal and tax uh, issues. Um, I'm sure there are some other threats that we could list as well. So the following isn't meant for to be on the homepage of the website or the statement on the cover of the brochure, but it is meant to ground us in terms of how we think about communicating Hampshire to those key audiences that we referenced earlier. So it's a it's a common marketing tool to again uh, make sure that we've got something where we're going. Hey, if we're writing something, let's check it against the positioning statement and make sure that we've got. Um, we've got our benefits in there, we've got our audiences in there, we've got our differentiators. So I'll just read this aloud. Um, for those looking for a growing community with hometown charm, uh, great schools and friendly neighbors, Hampshire is a wonderful place to live, visit, and locate a business. Blending rural lifestyle with access to the city, Hampshire boasts an I-90 interchange, a pro-business environment, and room to grow. A renewed focus on its traditional downtown, not every community has that traditional downtown, will create an even stronger sense of community. When you're in Hampshire, you're in a small town with a big part. We heard that from a lot of people, just as you saw in the what's best, the neighbors, people look you in the eye. 
when they're when they see you on the street, you know, people help each other out. That type of thing. So, uh, so from a key message standpoint, uh, again, these are just the types of things that we want to make sure we're communicating across the board whenever we're speaking, whenever we're writing, whenever we're communicating with people. So grow a community, rural lifestyle. It's got small town charm, the friendly, welcoming neighbors. It's got terrific schools. I think we need to blow that out in terms of what that actually means because every community will say we've got terrific schools. In some school districts, you can go to test scores. In other school districts, you have to go to you know, the, the, the quality of the kids that we've produced or the types of programs that we've had or our arts and band program are the best you know, in the state, those types of things. So we're familiar with doing both. If you don't have the great test scores, then you go to all those other stories and the people stories is what people you know, people love that. And if you've got both, right, you've got the good test scores, then you add on the people stuff that are really, really safe. So uh, the access to Chicago O'Hare and the I named the interchange. We didn't add in there, but maybe we should, uh, the Rockford aspect, um, especially with the growth in the Rockford Airport. Uh, again, your proximity to Rockford is, 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 is quite strong. So, and then the streetscape that'll drive surgeons in the community's core. We listed briefly also some economic development key messages because again, that's what you guys are gonna be focused on. So here's the overall uh, village messages and then these are the types of things that we've got to stay focused on. So you've got a village government uh, that is professional and responsive and uh, easy or easier, getting better to work with. Uh, however, you might just want to characterize it, but I think to the outside world, easy to work with and welcoming of newcomers. Uh, the crossroads of the major uh, roads uh, and easy access to Metra. The abundant water and sewer capacity. I, I'm always struck by. Um, uh, Bedford Park, you know, that everybody's heard those commercials, right? They just lead with abundant, you know, water, uh, uh, that type of thing. So you've got it here. Uh, the high-speed internet access is listed on the website, um, but I, I did, did not check with you guys on that if it's, in fact, an actual strength. Yeah, it is for business. We have uh, two different uh, companies that have high-speed business. It's not available. It's not, it's not residential, right? right okay. Well, I mean, they have high speed, but just not fiber. Got it. Okay. Right. So you got fiber for business. Great. That's that's the way. Right. And then you've got room to grow. But as we know, that, that internet access is just going to get bigger and bigger with 5G and more and more important, especially if you're a community that's a little bit more rural. Um, so, um, so an important message. Any, any, anything, any reactions there so far that? Anybody wants to comment on or? Okay. Uh, the one thing I just wanted to comment on, um, just to think back one. Um, yeah, I just would love to get your take on this last sentence in the second paragraph. But when you focus on this traditional downtown, which is historic downtown, is there um, is there a different perception with with consumers or people you know locate? using the word traditional versus historic, are they interchangeable? I think from a marketing standpoint, we can use historic downtown. I think from a, sort of an industry standpoint, uh, the idea, and, and it is known to some extent with the general public, but that traditional downtown, it's not a town center. So it's a little bit of an industry term or a term of art. I think to your point, we would want to say historic and charming downtown. You know? uh, but I think it's okay also to remind people that you've always had a downtown, right? Some communities are some communities are creating downtowns. And that's yeah. really hard, right? Yeah, so I look at a lot of the neighboring communities and they would call it a downtown because <clears throat> they're all the same. Tradition. Ours is probably a little bit different than that. Okay. Yeah, but we'll, we'll I, circle I, that I, word. I just wanted to know your your point of view. So this is just a bunch of examples of taglines of other communities. Frankly, there's a festival of sameness. And so one of the things we want to do is work with you to do something that's active and that communicates a differentiation from other communities. And again, is a little bit inspirational and aspirational. So um, it's not to say that there's that these are necessarily bad, but there's not a lot of great ones like 
Um, I, I would say Glen Ellen Village of Volunteers. I don't, okay, that's fine, but what is that? Darien's is quite strong. I saw that one. Which one? Darien's is quite strong. Yeah, a nice place to live. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So let's just replace it with Hampshire or right. Huntley yeah. or whatever, right? So, um, you know, there's, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing, um, there's no, you know, so we, we and we were believers in doing something that's maybe more active and again more action oriented. So do or be or go or make or something to that effect. So um, and when we get to some of these examples here too, we really just want to test you and see if there's a concept you like or a word or a turn of a phrase before we go to the next level and really start honing in on what's what it might be. So these are just examples. Go ahead to the next one of, of what others are doing in the area. Oh, sorry, you did. Um, and, you know, again, I think, you know, Lyle, the Arboretum Village, and Lombard, the Lilac, the Lilac Village, these are differentiators, but I don't know that you're going to go live there because they have lilacs. The number of parks have been stretched, isn't it? Hanover Park's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> it's uh, it's aspirational. There you go. <laughs> and, and I know they have uh, about uh, it's about eighty languages spoken. So the, the one that's the one that's kind of interesting is that's I'm sure you all know. As soon as I say it, you're going to say, "Yeah, I know that one." Is St. Charles and the Pride of the Fox? I think that's fairly well known. Uh, the, the pride of the fox. So it's 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 long standing, um, and and it, it seems to have just sort of sunk in. What's the what's the connection? Uh, the Fox River, just uh, the pride of the Fox River, and they have a fox. There's so many towns that the river runs that mm -hmm. kind of claim ownership of. Yeah, yeah, they're they're yeah. like the. Yeah, they claim. Yeah, you're right. That's exactly well put. They claimed ownership of the Fox River. Yeah. All right. So let's look at some taglines here, and we'll run through them. And they just want to again, if there's anything you pick out that either love or hate, or there's a, a kernel of an idea, um, because again, this is a starting process. We want to get your feedback on what you're hearing tonight and what starts to ring for you guys. So. Um, you know, this idea of goodness, I, I never would have thought of the word goodness, but there's something that's kind of interesting about it. Uh, the country charm, the, the village angle, um, but does the village angle sort of pigeonhole you a little bit instead of moving you forward? Um, you know, small town, big heart. In other words, what do we do something that's small and big or, you know, here and there type of thing? Uh, so you've got sort of a sing song effect. Um, go to the next one, Josh. You know, what if we kind of went big, the best small town around or the best village around and just said, you know, Hampshire is is the best. Um, and um, uh, or what if you said something like, you know, finding yourself here, which has a little bit of a, a double meaning or see yourself here or more of a uh, you could see yourself. Um, I think it's all here is, again, too generic and could be applied anywhere. Um, keep going. You know, or or you know, what if it's you know, what if it's sort of this uh, you know, life or lifetime opportunity or good life or great days ahead, um, that or life that's energized and we could do something with punctuation too with periods. Um, there's something interesting about the idea of life simplified. Uh, which could also be used for economic development purposes, businesses, business simplified. So trying to keep things uh, simple, simple is maybe too simple, but simplifying things uh, from you know other places where it's maybe more fast paced and more complicated. And I think we got one more group. Oh, sorry, that's uh, that's oh, that's right. We went from four groups to three groups here. So. So just, I'm gonna pause here. Is, is there a word or a phrase or a direction that uh, uh, anything in here that you're seeing where you're like, hmm, kind of, it's kind of interesting. 
And you asked him, like, because I wrote a couple down that I found, like, stuck out for me. Good. Like, well. Okay. Um, your heart beats in Hampshire. Uh, find yourself here in the good life. Those, I was trying to pick my favorite in each group. Um, I like the energy of them all, kind of like what you were saying about being sounding more active, like in not your heart beats in Hampshire. Find yourself here, I, I think, is kind of cool because it kind of makes you think about that. Like find yourself here. It could be it could be for anything. It could be to live. It could be to play. It could be to work. Mm -hmm. um, and I, the good life. Again, I think that can relate to all of the above that Hampshire has to offer, whether you're here for work or business or play or to live. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones that stick out for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? In the third group, the phrase life simplified. And I'm trying to articulate exactly why that caught my attention. With some of the other municipalities and their taglines that you had provided initially, it a lot of them were not grandiose, but inspirational and shebang. Um, life simplified is something, there's something honest about it. Mm -hmm. And I think it does, the community does reflect and mirror that. It's got, we have something that a lot of the other communities don't. And I think it's what draws a lot of people here. Um, the simplicity and the honesty of it, I, I guess. I like that one that kind of stood out for me. Anybody else? I have two. Um, I like come home to cut the time. I love that sound. Um, I did like best little village around, but then all I could get the hymns, the best little whorehouse in town. <laughs> 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 that takes is, that, is that bad? Is that, that's, you're saying that's bad. Yeah, that's you want to so burn that. So. <laughs> yeah, reflecting on this. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's bold, right? All right, you guys, anything? My only feedback um, is more so I, I'm just not necessarily in love of any of the taglines that talk about where we're at today. Okay. Knowing that in 10 to 15 years, things could look dramatically different. Mm -hmm. right? Got it. Got it. So, in other words, little or village or something is too confining. Yeah, I, so I at some point it's just we're going to have to change it. All that, right. Uh, where Prior of the Fox is something they can help with that. All right. If I can be honest, none of them grab me. Okay. And that's just, there, there's, there's a, um, and I think that's the challenge that we really have in front of us is that from an outsider's perspective, it is radically different to differentiate us from the group of the old group of the group of the group of the I say that with respect is nothing grabs me just because I think the challenge is that difficult is um, I was looking for something that reflects uh, the dual concept of rural charm or rural quality um, and, uh, and, you know, the opportunity to grow soon, you know, that, uh, that there's this sort of we're on the come sort of that balance. And it, 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 like, I don't know, I'm not, marketing is not my specialty. I'm in sales direct, you know, person to person sales as opposed to trying to sell large groups of people. So I just don't have a gift for it. But yes, yeah, so another right. really tough Yeah, but the idea of the, the yeah, little little term so cool. idea is sort of where you've been, where you are, but the opportunity to move forward. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you know, I, to, I mean, the goal, I think, is to draw attention. I think the one thing when we looked at the other taglines from the other brands or the other, well, I guess in a sense they are brands, right? um, as we're going through them and we're looking at them and they're just generic, they're right. sort of like we just kind of came up with something, you know, and um, I don't know, I guess my challenge would be, uh, I think we can do something that grabs people's okay. attention. Okay. 
what happens in Hampshire stays in Hampshire. <laughs> if Vegas is cool with that, we could go. No, I mean, you know, something like, you know, that I, I just, it, in the, the last, the last group, group had the most that I thought found the most interesting. I thought. I really like Life Simplified. That of all the ones, that one I liked. If it blended with like Life Simplified, but ready to rise or something mm -hmm. like that, you know, is sort of something in that sort of because I think we're we're trying to appeal to two different groups of people. Right. I think we're trying to appeal to people yeah. who want to move here, and then we're also trying to appeal to businesses that want to. You know, every good business person I've ever met is looking for you know uh, 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 an overweight performance, right? They want to outperform the market, mm -hmm. and I think if there's a way that we can sort of talk about businesses coming here as an opportunity to outperform, like we're on the we're on the cusp of, and and I think we can maintain that forever. Yeah, theoretically, right, is that, you know, the principals and the people that are involved in running Hampshire are you know, friendly and, and easy to work with and, and all that other stuff. But something that can sort of capture both yeah. beauty and the quality of the world, uh, where we've been and where we're ready to go. Okay. Um, Got it. So, yeah, that's, that's great feedback. I kept thinking of crossroads because we've got so many major highways. Crossroads in the country, crossroads to the country. Yeah. Looks like a Grand Central right. Station of the West. Or something. So we had a couple of crossroads in there and I'll uh, just uh, all candor took it out because there are it, it's sort of ascribed a as you know the, the intersection of the place and and tends to reflect more of a, a going somewhere quality. So because I, I, we started down that path and took it out for the reason I just articulated. So we could go back to it because um, I think the trick is you, you don't want to be the place that everybody's going by. You want to be the place that where people are staying. So I'll, we'll revisit we'll revisit that because I think there is there is something. I mean, it's true. Also, I think that's what you were saying about life simplified. Is it, it's got to feel real and authentic and honest. I, I think it's how you interpret I think so too because I view it not in a super positive way. I view mm -hmm. crossroads as I'm in a crossroads in my it's my first thought. I'm in a crossroads right. in my life, and I got to decide which way I want to get go. But it's not here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of see it from what I think I understand where you guys were taking it, even yeah. though I understand where you're seeing it. That's a direction you can find your way. Once you know where the crossroads are, you can find your way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We'll explore it. I, I, I and just you know, we, yeah, we uh, we'll explore it again and see if it. <laughs> if I could make one more point about find yourself here, because I keep thinking about it. And to Ryan's point, one of the things I liked about it the more I thought about it, and I, it was bad that I had to keep thinking about it to get to this, but um, but I like the idea of find yourself here in the sense of this is a this is a place of opportunity where you can find yourself, whether it's as a family or whether it's as uh, you know someone who is developing a business. You know, to me, I'm thinking find yourself in terms of like development. You know what I mean? In terms whether it's as a person or a yes. company. And I'm not saying it, it took me way too long in my brain to get there. So I'm pretty sure you know it's it's obviously not sticking out in that way to probably a lot of people. But that concept of having that like movement you know a feeling of movement in the tagline as opposed to feeling kind of static right right right, right. you know yeah, yeah i guess from i guess my my one thing that sits in my head is that part of the fox is to me and like just it's so good yeah mm -hmm. and and there's just something in that word about pride and there's something with ownership having the fox um i think that in all your recaps of all the conversations you've had, pride definitely comes up. You know, people are proud of you. It's almost like, you know, these taglines I view it as would somebody in, in a resident of Hampshire be willing to wear that on a t shirt walking through town? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, you you got to kind of embody whatever that tagline's going to be. So, right. Um, so, is there something that you can, based on all the conversations you had, is there some kind of nuggets that we can pull out 
that might be able to be something that we can all rally around. You know, a pride of the small, you know, the pride of the small towns or the pride of maybe it's the pride is is a bad bad word to use, but um I I think there is something there that if we roll it out, every resident could get behind. Um okay. Yeah, we'll work we'll work on that. Whether it's the pride of or the something, yeah, we have to the something of part of the West. Because they took the fox, because the fox was a big problem with the king. Yeah, that was where the, the edge of the metropolis was probably, you know, because it grew. I mean, I grew up in Glendale Heights, the metropolis hadn't gotten really to St. Charles really by when I was growing up. But, you know, what do we have? I mean, like, can we lay claim to something, you know, a, you know in the Huntley, Pingree, Genoa? Because, like, today there were rural, I mean, I was in Huntley, felt too large, but relatively sort of smaller, middling, but in 15, 20, 30 years. This will be no different than in a park, and you know, uh, it's just inevitable that's going to happen. So, is this a space where, to your point, we can lay claim to something that can last? Um, you know, uh, I don't know what this place is, the West, I mean, you know, it, in Illinois, it certainly is. I mean, people who visit me think it's Iowa, um, but you know, something, no, I, I kind of like that too, yeah. that, that idea, but I do want to capture some energy in a way that draws people's attention. Okay, great, great. Um, we have one more thing we want to get your opinion on here, and this is uh, just community branding and graphic identity. So again, uh, in this case, sort of like when you look at things like, oh, I like that concept, or we really don't like that concept. So we'll go through. We're we're, we're uh, let's set the table with this. So these are some of the logos of some some of the communities that are close by. Go ahead, Josh. And then there's different categories uh, after this one also. Um, after that one, sorry, sorry. Okay, so one category, you know, that's been around since the beginning of time is the idea of a seal. And in some cases, uh, communities have updated their seal so it looks a little more fresh and contemporary, or it looks a little classic, right? So Round Rock, Texas, or Louisville, um, their their seals. Um, uh, but but there's there's also there's an emblem if you will there's a badge quality to it. So another category is just is um, you know just strong type um, and a strong image that you know in, in, in that uses say the first letter. So Houston, Melbourne, Australia, Charlevoix, Michigan, Providence, Amarillo, etc. So you've got a symbol Cincinnati. A symbol that goes with the name or the word. Uh, something that's largely typographic, right? So Fargo, for example, we would call these logo types versus logos, right? It doesn't have the symbol over here and the name over here. It's it's sort of the feeling you get when you see Frisco, for example, or Columbus that emphasizes the us or the US. Uh, others that are very place-based, this one is very challenging in the Midwest, uh, really, unless you're on the Mississippi, uh, or maybe you're St. Louis with an arch, but, you know, um, uh, uh, Oak Creek, Wisconsin did it because they've got the lake, you know, right there, Lake Michigan, so um, uh, a Lake Superior, right, you know, you can have a big sailboat, you know, on, on, in Superior. Um, San Diego with the sun. Did you so. say Coon Creek's not significant enough? No, oh, what? No, it's well, it's it, it's, Can we it's no, it's not. <laughs> it's, I was thinking of village of cons. With village of cats, we get to the pool, pool, pond, pond would be good for you. Uh, it's a candy shaker for those who are in. Um, uh, something that evokes a feeling. Um, and, and you can see a lot of these are international, um, but a few are in, you know, San Antonio just sort of feels like what you might expect from a town with the city with the Alamo, Nashville and Music City, you know, it's it's uh, loosely based on sort of a guitar shape and it's got like, you know, the skyline sort of thing. But I think when you see Nashville, it's, it's, it's Music City. 
And then just something that's just very graphic, almost like I'm not really even sure what the heck this is, but I either love it or hate it. Um, you know, so, so uh, you know, Arlington, <clears throat> Arlington, Texas. It's clearly there's an uh, there's an A and there's a star in that, you know, everything in Texas is big and has a star. In it. But some of these are like, like the islands of the Bahamas. Is that are those turtles or those islands? I thought turtles and islands both. Yeah. <laughs> right. Excuse me. All right. I said that for the categories. That's the category. So let's run back through them from the top. And again, just in here, just blurt out. I hate seals, or I, I love seals if it's done right. So we'll do it, you know, quickly. I hate uh, seals. One vote for hate. <laughs> I did offer you that opportunity to hate. Not a fan. Yes, very complimentary. Okay. As long as it's done tasteful and classy, I don't have a problem with seal. I like the Florida Reef of Louisville. Is that a great find for Fresno? I can't even see if that is, but. As long as it's done and can identify with it, I don't care about it. Yeah. It's fine. All right. But not a lot of, you're okay with it, but there's not a lot of, yeah. like, yay, let's go, seals. Right. right. Okay. So there's either disdain or mild interest. Correct? <laughs> okay. Okay. That's good. That's good to know. Did you guys have a feeling on that? I just wanted to. I don't know. Okay. I'm just here to listen. Okay. Uh, okay. So anything in here that is kind of interesting to you? I like them. I like Denison a lot. Mm, okay, um, it's clean. Um, it's visually appealing. They're all kind of colorful too. Denison maybe not the most colorful there, but I like the movement in Denison. Yeah. Um, it it gives me sort of a with the sail. It just gives me like a warm feeling. Like it just seems like it's some place I might want to go and grab a burger by the water for some reason. I like Charlevoix. It's not like I have a suit, but it's got the whole picture of it. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, that's pretty. And, and you guys, full, Charlevoix is ours. So I just, so most of these, very few of these are, but we threw that one in. So I thank you, as you say. <laughs> well and, done, um, yeah. yeah. Does it have that uh, drunk tank color thing on purpose? The what? Yeah, and so there's a book, it's called Drunk Tank Tank. Yeah, they paint drum tanks in prisons for because that, there's a shade of pink that calms people down. Oh, yeah, sort of the salmon. Yeah, pink. Huh. Yeah. And so yeah. Um, sometimes when you see pink, it gives you a, a sense of relaxation. <clears throat> so I look at that and I feel like relaxed. Longer. Yeah. Ooh. Maybe you subconsciously, you know, design it, but it, it's it's nice. It is supposed to be sunrise and sunset. If you, uh, Charlotte was 2,500 people uh, between Petoskey and, and uh, Traverse City, but you could literally, uh, from the downtown, if you spent all day downtown, you could watch the sunrise and the sunset and not move more than a couple of hundred yards. It's, it's really kind of cool because yeah. it's got Lake Michigan yeah, to, the, to the west yeah. and Lake Charlotte to the east. So yeah. it's, it's sunrise, sunset. It's also the, the different uh, waters, the three, there's three lakes, uh, Lake Michigan, of course, being the biggest one. And that's, it's hard to see from here, but it's a lighthouse. There's something there. fun about these to me. To me, it just seems, not that we're not fun, it just, um, it seems more like destination, um, like vacation. Um, I keep picturing it on a shirt. You keep saying you have it on a yeah. shirt, you wear a problem. Yeah. Well, and I coached uh, youth sports here for about 16 years, and every hat uh, that we had or a shirt that we ever had always had a pretty big H. The high school mm -hmm. is a big H. Yeah. And we would play in these tournaments against teams from all over the place, out of state and other places, and always felt like that big H, I don't know if H is just a strong letter uh, in, in, in a way, but that to me, I look at that letter as a defining sort of symbol of at least Hampshire. Yeah, and, and I, I, I love what you guys are saying about the t-shirt test. You're right. You know, would somebody wear it on a t-shirt test? Right. We're we're rebranding a golf course right now um, on the North Shore. And and one of one of our goals is is for them to be able to sell a lot of golf shirts out. Oh, sure, right. Yeah. So yeah, right. 
You know, the one thing that comes to mind is, and I don't know if we're going to mention it, but the, anything you see with cancer has a paw print in it. Yeah, sure. Mm. Like, I, I can't believe yes. you found this right. No, that's a great point, point actually. It's the um, whippers. Yeah, the whippers. No, it's tough. So, our, our colors are white and purple, so split in half. That's why the whipper is our, our mascot. Um, it is, is, is that because it's white and purple? Is that lower? Right? Okay. Yeah. So the high school, like all the spirit wear from the high school mm -hmm. and is all uh, white and purple or black and purple. And it's, um, it's got gray and purple and then it's got um, a paw print. So. Just like Clemson. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So no, there, there's, there's probably more advertising of that in the suburbs than anything else that no we doubt. have done. Right. No Right. So just maybe add. Yeah, I can know that. Yeah. Yeah, what's a whipper? Okay. So go on to the next group. Um, anything in here that stands out? Yeah, very busy. Chris looks kind of cool. Look at all the labels. Right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you said you do or don't like them? Yeah. Columbus, Frisco, any others that stand out? Frisco looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like Frisco and Columbus, Atlanta. I just, I, I like these a lot. I just don't see them for Hampshire. Here's something oh, slow vintage. Karen, are, slow you, are you saying that you like the normal? Yeah. yeah. So that, that it's a little bit vintage. Which, which one? Frisco. Oh, I like, yeah, I like the vintage look of Frisco. Overall, I think they all feel very urban to me. Um, <laughs> except for Frisco. Which is, yeah, the one that's not urban, right. right. So. And so I just don't like I really like them, but I don't know that I would like it. Like I love downtown Nola, but I don't know if it's just because I love Nola. Right. <laughs> Gets me happy. Lincoln, I'm not really sure about what's going on there, but um. All right, next next group. Okay, so typographic, not not really grabbing you, but Frisco is interesting. And what about the place? Again, recognizing that we don't have the mountains or the or, or the big lake, we do have the creek, and we've thrown that out. Uh, sorry. Um, it's but anything anything here that you just like? I I love all of them. San Diego. I love San Diego. Yeah, I love Colorado Springs. I think that was cool. Oak Creek looks great. I like the approach of Denver. Mm -hmm. Putting it through the filter of uh, if we were to use the H as well as that emphasizing the mm -hmm. picture and the tagline with it, mm -hmm. how a letter can live kind of on its own. Right. And then you can always do offshoots, right? Of just yes. the letter, sometimes the letter and slogan. Mm -hmm. We do that with Stanley. We've got a big S. Right. So so maybe the H is is illustrated somehow with different aspects of the community. And as long as it's got to shrink, as we all know, it's got to live on Facebook on you know, that big. Right. But um, and that was the challenge with Charlevoix and is with a lot of these. You can't everybody not. I shouldn't say everybody because you haven't said that yet, but almost everyone wants to complicate things. They end up, we start simple and ends up wanting to call, let's put more and more into it. And that's when it gets watered down. So I think the t-shirt test is something we need to keep coming back to, um, but also that social media icon. So, okay. Yeah, it's got to, yeah. So it was, it, there's an urge to get more complicated and then we have to, to say, let's let's simplify it a little bit too, so, okay. And then uh, was there another category? Yeah, anything in here that you like? If the answer is no, that's okay. I like uh, Nashville. Yeah, Nashville's great. Yeah. I like a lot. You do? I don't understand Richmond at all. What is it, a bird? I, I think it's a bird, and I'm not sure why that. Horses, the horses. Don't the horses run through? At the bottom, second one. There's a second row. Oh, second, second one. Yeah, second row, second. I wonder if that's where they, somewhere in Virginia, I know they have wild horses that run through. No, they're just wild. They kind of run through. Is that a horse or small? Yeah, I don't know. Richmond? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to remember. I kind of like Georgetown. Is it a road record? 
San Antonio is the first. And I think that's Georgetown, Colorado, if I remember. I could be wrong. It kind of looks like San Antonio. What's the bottom of the South? Spain. Spain. Is it Finland? Oh, is it Finland? I'm not sure what that is. Is it Finland? It is Finland, yeah. Get this already. <laughs> what was that scene? Right. Okay. Round, round. Uh, maybe. The only, the only thing I was thinking of that would have been good here at Rooster Thunder, and that is so we have the clock, right? And if the clock had already been in town for the last 20, 30, 40 years, that would have been a great outline to then put something in. But <laughs> it's not there yet. So, <laughs> right. you know, we're not known for it yet. <laughs> so, sorry, do me a favor, confirm. Do you like, I heard a Nashville. Like Goshen County, Georgetown, San Antonio, was there any affection for something? Because it, it it sort of has a badge-like quality to it. Yes or no? Does it's okay? It's kind of a badge, sort of a badge, badge type quality. It just feels like it's just been seen a lot. Uh, and those three that I mentioned? Yeah. Okay. I mean, they're nice. Which three was it? Goshen County, Georgetown, and San Antonio. I like the conciseness of seeing it's something I think that could help. There are people in Texas, probably uh, the tests I go through for these are can you pull all the words off and know exactly where it's from, right? And, um, you know, natural is probably the same, same way. You probably take a couple of guesses for it to get close. What does it say beneath San Antonio? And within the real fine, I can't see it. There's something hard. What is it? Deep in the heart. Is it almost? Who's slogan? What is it almost? Land of Lincoln? Oh. I said, we draw my question. <laughs> Don't put that in the middle. I'm curious. What is it? And you said, oh my God. <laughs> All right, good. Well, this this is good. This is helpful, uh, both the tagline and the logo perspective, because we're going to keep working on taglines, but then we're also going to roll into the to the visual identity, the graphic identity portion. So, uh, oh yeah, the the one more group. Yeah, this tends to be international. Uh, you know, I, I, Moldova, ninety day fiance, ninety fiance. <laughs> He's from Moldova. Sorry. Wait, who, who's from Moldova? Uh, you ever watch 90 Day Fiance? No. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did I say that too firmly? No. <laughs> no, I don't. Remember. I've been meaning to. I just said it again. Yeah, yeah thank you. Nice. I, like, I really use that. Political. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I've been, I've been meaning to. It's in my DVR. Erg's I just like, what is that? It looked like hammers. Like, I'd be afraid to go there. Workers. Yeah. Or the uh, maybe engineering or something. Yeah, and I don't know that any of these really again fit you. They're just a little too fanciful on the international stuff too. But again, we like to show it just to so you can see a very broad range of everything from you know towns in Illinois to global cities. So, all right, good. Well, okay, that is helpful from a tagline and a logo perspective, graphic identity perspective. So. That's all we have for you tonight. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank okay. you for your really? feedback. And thank you. Yes. Thank one, you. one last thought on the tagline, which I've noticed here, the shorter and more concise they are, you know, because some of the ones that you had in the examples were really long to me. Yeah. And that's just something maybe I would like to reiterate that I think is effective is to keep it, you know, fairly short and as opposed to some of the longer ones. I, you know, I, I'll just, I'll, I'll just whatnot. say, yeah, I'll, I'll just say it here because we are here, but. Uh, I think there's something back to the T-shirt test, like a big H and you know, a big heart, right? You know, Hampshire, you know, big heart has there's something that just feels really friendly and comfortable and attractive about it. Now, it doesn't have, Brian, back to your point of it, a little bit of the present and the going forward part. Um, what's that? No, I can't see businesses getting excited about that. Yeah. What about home? Like the word just yeah. Oh, just hope. Oh. Or that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. 
Anyway, we'll work out a variety. Like the logos, we're gonna we're gonna put them more in buckets. So we're gonna have, you know, we'll end up having a group that's like today and tomorrow, right? Okay. And some that are maybe just really concise. And um, uh, and then come back and you know, go to the PR committee as well. So, all right. So good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank, thank you. Appreciate okay, your time. So thanks for your feedback, your input, and yeah, play along. Okay. Perfect. All right. Uh, well, we look forward to uh, the next. Uh, I would imagine we'll be coming back again before January. Or would we expect it? Well, the time time frame is actually one of the slides. Did I miss that? <laughs> yeah, I think there's there's PR. There's you guys with PR committee, and there's also the the board and what you like to think. So this is probably the last session of the year. Okay. Right. The PR committee and the village board. <laughs> but and then when you're done with the with getting input, then it will adjust the presentation of the whatever the final of the just go to the village board or is it are you planning on sort of presenting? Jay, what do you have in mind for that? Um, frankly, we just saw the time schedule tonight. The dates we were okay. focused on the input sessions, getting all that done sure. before yeah. the uh, November. So I think December will be the month where we'll decide if we have to come back here again, back to PR or we will be Certainly, and I think I speak for the members of the board. We'd be interested in seeing what you come up with based on our input prior to the That makes sense. That's I, just, I, 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 you're not, not saying that you have to. We're just saying, it, I think as a commission, we'd be interested in giving one, one more round of feedback once you sort of narrow it down. That makes sense. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. So, yeah, thank you. I won't stay for all of this, but if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind hearing number five, if that's okay by you. Yeah. So, yeah, you're welcome. I mean, okay. yeah, stay for a whole thing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You're you're welcome to stay. Is uh, we yeah. are. <laughs> you said 4 a.m. I, I mean, I'm expecting. You thought it was 6 a.m. Well, I'm, we can go there. <laughs> I do have to work at seven. Um, okay. All right. Thank you again um, to A5, Lizzie. Uh, we appreciate you joining us remotely. Thank you for all your work that you put out, uh, put in towards uh, helping the branding for our town. Um, but now let's move on to. Uh, Thanks, Lizzie. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so let's move on to item number five. So in the email that I had sent out um, to basically uh, share the agenda for this meeting, you know, I, I tried to list the things that I feel like we've accomplished. And I think it's important that anybody who gives their time, um, this board does require more time than a lot of boards do, accomplished a lot. Uh, I'm very proud of what we've accomplished in the time we seen that we were just formed three years and four months ago, I believe it was, um, five months ago. Um, however, I think that we kind of are coming to the end somewhat. We still have a couple things with the Main Street Committee that we're still working on, but we've, uh, we've accomplished a lot, but I, I feel like we need to start, a, start to set some new goals for ourselves. Some new objectives, um, some new directions, uh, things that, uh, you know, I, I think uh, when we first started back in 2017, uh, we really uh, we went through the smart, smart growth economic plan. Um, one of the focuses that we had laid out for ourselves is, you know, picking different areas of Hampshire, breaking Hampshire down into six different areas. Um, then we proceeded to sort of uh, go through our uh, analysis of what we thought uh, were some challenges, and some obstacles, things that had been done correctly, things that had been done poorly. And, and we sort of broke it down into six sessions, uh, six sessions. And then as a group, we had come to the conclusion that we felt like the section that needed the most energy, the most focus was downtown. And with the coming, and I'm still crossing my fingers, we'll, we'll talk to uh, get an update on where we are on the CPG here before we leave tonight. But with the coming uh, streetscape program that I very confident will be moved across the finish line, um, I feel like we've made a lot of progress with the SOD program. Advantage. So I wanted to sort of open up the conversation to the group. Where do we go next? What are some of the things that we think this board um should be looking at where should we be spending our time um you know i think the beauty of this board from the very beginning is that it was no single person's mission but it was a collective mission of all of ours and 
the way that we've decided a year ago before was based like this. Uh, it was to have a brainstorming session, kind of think about you know, where we go next. So that, that's really, I, I, I'm, it's pretty informal, but I'd really like to hear the opinions of the other people on board and kind of get your thoughts on where we can go. And whoever is the most excited to jump in first. Um, well, one of the things I could just start that conversation, um, you know, one of the, I've been here since the onset, and, uh, you know, I think we've kind of found our way along throughout the last three, three years. Um, I think it's important for us as we move forward, concentrating on what can be control of versus spending time on things we have zero control over. Um, we have debated quite a lot of things that we wish this could happen before, um, you know, things like that. But I think it, it would serve us all. We're kind of at that point. We've achieved a lot. And I think in order to incrementally get better, we have to look through the lens of can we really enhance whatever we're working on, right? Which is um, more vision casting. Um, I think one of the things we struggled with from the outset as well uh, was being able to be easy to do business with. I would love to solicit, Jay, your feedback, just because you tend to be the tip of the spear when businesses come to us. What what would be, don't mean to put you on the spot if you want to think about it, it's fine. Right. Um, but it's so when businesses approach the what are things that you see that we can improve on that this commission could assist in um, in helping with that? Um, I, I watched a, uh, a webinar today put on by the Illinois City Management Association. They interviewed a, a CEO in, in uh, Elk Grove, Bill, and he was he said, "You want people like you living in your town?" And that really stuck with me, and he talked about how. As a CEO of the company, he makes decisions for their business. He also makes decisions on suppliers. So it was really kind of a testament. In fact, it made me start thinking I need to get out and start networking with all of our people in town. All the, because we have several CEOs in town, headquarters facilities. That's the first thing that comes to mind is, is I think I've talked about this before, kind of co-oping all the leaders in the community who don't live in the community but work here. And uh, I've talked about an ambassador type of program People that we could, we could call on to, have to meet with prospects or something else stuck with me when I met with uh, the company that's been presented before tomorrow night, a um, company that has already bought land in town and planning on building a uh, construction materials recycling facility on the right of the road. And he, after we met with him, he said, um, he sent me a night to see four people with him architect, engineer, somebody uh, that's a controller, controller, and stuff to see, you know. And afterwards, he just sent me a simple sentence that said, uh, thanks for the meeting. It was really not, it was very refreshing to feel the can-do attitude. And uh, that was probably the biggest compliment you could make me, uh, pay us. So those are the two things that come to mind. Um, I, I don't know if you're all aware or not, we just changed building department companies. Um, so our building department is now probably the most tech-savvy, cloud-based um, application system country and uh, it's light years we just the opposite of what we were dealing with before um, so it, it, it's customer service you know we're providing good customer service making it easy for them to do business with it's something we've always talked about but now we're really making it happen so when I think about this board um, gosh everything you do is so helpful um, actually this this presentation today somebody said uh, actually one of the presenters was a segregation professional works for private industry. And she said, uh, everybody wants to have a facade improvement program, but nobody's doing facades right now. I said, well, you should come to our town because it's really working well here. Yeah. Um, honestly, that has probably had the biggest stamp on the village of anything that I've seen. Is that really, this building across the street is, is inspiring me to do some, something similar to Village Hall. Yeah. Uh, just turn around, look in that room for behind you. That's an image I'd rather see of the village. Okay. It in there. Okay. It looks a little different than it used to be. Yeah. Um, so 
I guess those are the first examples that come to mind. Um, but what you could do is, I mean, we, we need as a group to bring in more business people in the community and get them more involved in the community. And that's going to start by me just knocking on doors and going to see people in their offices and talking about you know, how they can help us. That's good. And actually, Karen, can I ask you to just share insight because you're a business owner in town. Um, we'd love to know just your, your feedback on just sitting on the, in the commission, being a business owner in town. Are there anything that, that we should be focused on? Do you see as possibly a, an opportunity for us to take advantage of? <clears throat> so some, one of the things that I talked to Lizzie about um and then i kind of have to share a story after that and it's all going to tie together i promise was i you know i don't live in hampshire um and but a lot of our employees do and um or they live in surrounding areas and they obviously spend a lot of time here um and you know we, we we're bringing more and more of our work out this way <clears throat> and i was mentioning that um you know hampshire is great um but as someone who doesn't live here and just works here, I, I, I worry that a lot of people just show up, you know, for their shift in the morning and then go home at night because I don't know that there's enough for them to do at lunchtime or after work. Hey, let's go grab a bite um, or I'm going to get there a little bit early and stop at this coffee shop maybe before work and get my, you know, just or shop a little bit for that gift on the way home. And it would be or if we have a client in town. You know, when we take them through, we do a lot of tours of our shop for clients, either existing or, or potential. You know, just the feeling of well, where can we go for dinner afterwards um, and feeling like we have to maybe go back to the Carpentersville, Dundee area because there's just more um, variety there. Um, and so I think that there's a lot of opportunity for that, for, for the group. It's what I would like to see as a business owner of that size, and I don't know... And I, I'm still new to this commission, so I'm not really sure of the full demographics of the sizes of businesses and the types, you know, the numbers of employees each one has. But, um, you know, we think it's walkover. I mean, it's just, it would be great for us to be able to do that, like with the whole Main Street and downtown renovation. And I have to share that. Does that answer your question? It does. I mean, it's uh, an age old question of we get people here, but then it's like, where do they build or where do they go? Well, and it's helpful for us. Can I do this while I'm talking? To, okay, thank you. It's, hard for me. it's helpful for us too if we're looking to expand our employee base and to incentivize people to, you know, we want people to work closely or to live closely to where they work. It's it's good for us because they're right here and we don't have to worry about, you know, travel times and downtime and um, traffic and this and it's just. Um, and so. It, as a as a residential community, I don't think there's much of a problem there with the school systems are you know really well known and and it's beautiful and everybody's so friendly. But um, but I do think that that's part of it. Like, well, you know, where do you go to eat or where do you take your kids, you know, for food or where does my wife and I go every day and night? Um, so really quick story. I'm in Elgin getting my hair cut and <laughs> I'm talking to this cute girl. She's young. I mean, just got married. She's in her early twenties. I don't even know how we got in the conversation, but she's like, oh, I live in Hampshire. I think I said something about um, work or something. And I said, oh, well, you know, and she just, you know, doesn't live too far. And she's like, yeah, you know, um, I'm talking about maybe buying a, this business that's for sale. And like we, my husband and I, we'd love to have this, we have this whole idea of like a coffee shop and like a place to get sandwiches and read. And, and she's going on and on with this great I'm, and I, I'm like, please do it. Like, this would be fantastic. You know, you're young, you're dynamic, you're ready to start a business or a family. Like you're, you're someone that I could see being rooted here for a very long time. Um, and, and I'm like, I'm on this business development commission. We can help you. And, you know, and, and just kind of giving her a pitch. And she's like, well, we'll see. And, you know, we'll see how it goes. And I gave her my card and whatnot. And I thought, she's like, I don't know. It seems like it's kind of daunting. And I don't really know what's involved, you know. So thinking like maybe we can, and I think that we've talked about this in previous recent meetings about maybe getting some sort of, you know, lunch and learn type situation or coffee and, you know, how to start a business, maybe doing a, a one or two outreach programs to educate people who are maybe thinking of starting a business and, 
you know, talking about why Hampshire is a great place to pick your, your home base to do that. And I'm just literally throwing out ideas here for that. And I don't know if that makes any, that would be worthwhile and how we would reach people in the area um, who might be noodling these things over because they see a vacant building and think, gosh, I always had this idea that I would do this type of business or that type of business. And, um, but she struck me as, you know, gosh, that's, she's someone that, mm. I go back for my haircut next. I'm going to follow up. <laughs> it's so funny you mentioned that because that was my third point. Is that I think we all know somebody that lives in Hampshire that has a business idea or they have an adventure they do on the side. And they just are kind of at that crossroad. They just they want to, but it is, you know, for something that might not be able to business that we, you know, they're in love. They're really good at doing whatever they're doing on the side now. Right, running a business is very different. Mm -hmm. um, these are these are the people we want to own businesses, in Russia, right? I mean, they live here. They're all in. They're invested. How do we cultivate that? And again, we we um, you know we can leverage social media, and maybe it's sort of small. We learn. We start with one, the coffee shop, bakery thing is the one that tends to be discussed a lot. Mm -hmm. Maybe we just throw uh, a really simple kind of like how you it out of the Hampshire Facebook page. Of, if you've been interested in, you know, residents have said they wanted this. If you've been interested, let us know. And we're just, you know, we'll sit down and have a conversation. And um, you know, there's lenders in town that are to work, you know, is so so to that point there might be something there that we could get yeah, and I, I mean to project we talked about it, and it's it's part of i thought a really exciting thing that we talked about early that i felt like we should have moved away from is this notion that um it, it's a big vision thing to where um developing local communities I think are fundamentally better when they're owned by locals. Uh, I think just in general, if you look at you know, the, the the academic literature on this, it's just it's indisputable. The problem is there is a gap. There is a gap between um, someone's desire to start a business and that feeling of confidence that's required to put your own money in. And I'm always shocked at the people who sometimes succeed as biz at business, and I rub elbows with them. I get to know them, and I'm like, some not, some people are genuinely special. Some of them are just people that just had more guts, or they had a guide, or they had, you know, they weren't necessarily. So I really, I mean, this is a, this is a big vision type thing. I would love to coordinate with the chamber in some way of an entrepreneur program that. Um, let me try. I knew I, I knew because you had thoughts on it before. I to, and, I, and I know there's challenges with it. No, uh, I, I got new news. Oh, okay. All right. So I, I just think if we can pull that off, if we can find a way to take the collective knowledge of all the people in Hampshire in some way and build a bridge that local people can get from idea to implementation without it costing a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? We don't, you know, whatever. But yes, so Suze, what do you have? Elgin Community College, because of COVID, opened up for a small business she's back, she's back. It is open now. Awesome. So if we could partner with them, yes. those people who love to partner with them, then answer that one. In, in one of the things in my business, we sell industrial robotics that we have found because the uh, tech that we sell is so advanced that oftentimes you're not actually selling the product. What you're selling is the knowledge about the product. What you're doing is you're bridging a knowledge gap for a customer to feel comfortable to implement a tool that's going to help them. And if we as a village could sort of be part of that process of closing a knowledge gap that would make people feel more confident to go on. Because in my long-term vision of Hampshire, I don't, you know, for me, I know it doesn't get me excited as Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, and McDonald's, Burger King, whatever. I don't care. Fundamentally do not care about that stuff. It's fine, it's good for our residents, it's convenient, it's cheap food, they get access to it, it's more options. What really makes me excited is 
your neighbor opens a falafel place, right? Or my uh, Latino friend um, whose kid plays baseball with my kid, they open a taco joint. Or you know, someone opens a hardware store that isn't necessarily no brand related. Uh, I forgot I was talking to you. Uh, <laughs> but in, in general, if we can work towards, to me, that's exciting. It's kind of what you're taking that person. Because we were waiting on someone um, in the Arboretum. I'll never remember. That's around three months, something. Um, and her husband, they lived in Hampshire. Their hus her husband was a chef in Chicago. Yeah. Like, oh, we'd really love to start a restaurant. I'm like, I'm your guy. Let's go. You know, and have this great conversation. Gave him my card that I never heard. Yeah. Now, that's inevitable. It's going to happen. Right. However, if we can create something where it is a known quantity, a known entity, a collaboration over at a uh, uh, community college where we are actively sort of part of the education network of plugging people in. Now that excites me. That's what Dixon did. They partnered with the community college talk Valley where they were to help these new businesses coming into Dixon. So Dixon, oh, they actually provided them discounted rates for renting and gave them so many years of discounted rates for renting the building and then partnered them with South Valley to help them that junior college business to get them going. I mean, a business plan. I mean, they taught them everything. Right. Therefore, they're not businesses who are losing their success. I, I would recommend that. Um, yeah. Like this, this is all, we're going to get there. I feel confident. But I think it's important for us to work our way through one, to feel like where the gaps might be, where the other. Sure. Right. Um, I, I do think that there is an opportunity that um, two of my friends um, had white collar jobs, lost their jobs due to COVID, and now they they literally went and got small business loans and are starting to own businesses from scratch. Like, I mean, if, you know, you think people are losing their jobs and they're just trying to find work, but there's, I think, also a prime opportunity for people that might be looking to make a change. Necessity is the mother of, of invention, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And so there, there certainly could be, um, this time might actually be opportunity for people mm -hmm. to look to say, you know, I always thought about doing it. I lost a job. I can't find work. What do I have to lose? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And I think to make an effort on our part to really try and find as best to our ability, variety. I know like in Barrington, like if there's one more nail salon that opens up in Barrington, I'm gonna put a fork in my eye. Like how many nail salons does one town need? You know? <laughs> and you get kind of frustrated because you're like, you know, something else could have gone. I mean, and not that we wanna, like not that I would ever wanna spot someone's dream, but at the same time, I'm like, do we need 10 nail salons and, you know, 18 yeah. hair studios in one four block ring? I mean, I just don't think so. And because, and, and I think that communities like that do a good job of really pushing the the, the shop small, you know, campaign. Um, and and, the, and the, the business owners that I know in that area, you know, the ones that are really have been there a long time and are really successful, they have a great relationship with the village, which will be no problem here. I mean, small or large. I mean, my dad always says one of the biggest things he loved about coming to Hampshire was that it was really easy to work with the, with the village government. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and that's super important. And I don't think people realize just how important that is maybe at first, because maybe they walk in as a new, I mean, he's a seasoned business owner, but maybe a new business owner might not understand just how much you're really working with your local village. Yeah. Um, and having that relationship is really important for, for everyone's success. So. Yeah. And I think in addition, yeah, I think it's really, and, and I, I mean, Lots of sort of new on some sort of specific things that because one of the things that I think we've succeeded so far is we've been able to translate from vision to action to policy, right? To, in, in that in that direction. And I mean the SAP program's reach, remember? <laughs> we introduced every time we got last at regional. Um, but the more we talked about it, the more we shared the vision, the more we um, you know talk more than, you know, it, it just, it became common sense. And I think like, cause the other thing I think is interesting, cause you brought up, we talked about that too, is a business consortium 
right, is I think bringing the CEOs of the key, well, not even key, anybody who wants to be involved, right, is maybe every quarter having a, you know, opportunity to come sit and talk with the village and give us your, your input, right? I mean, we can buy, a, you know, some pizza or cookies or coffee or, or whatever. Not everybody's going to come. But if every time they come, we have substance and value and they find it informative and they get to build relationships. So, I mean, I think those are two interesting pieces where we can sort of develop some relatively specific plans um, that are uh, actionable, things that we can do, and then measurable to see you know, how well we're doing at it. But I don't know, those are two things, and I'm open to more ideas, but I think focusing on Tapping into, as Jay had mentioned, in addition to you sitting down and talking with them, maybe inviting them to come, you know, join, and, and obviously other trustees can be, just sort of building that sense of community, building that sense that we're all in it together, building that sense that, you know, the policies that we have aren't for just a handful of our friends. The policies that we put into place are for every business that operates here. Anybody who was in the town of Hampshire, we have a facade program for you. It's not just for our friends that we, you know, are trying to. It's for anyone. And um, I, don't know, I think those two things, and then an entrepreneurial assistance program in collaboration with professionals from, say, the SBA. Well, on that point, I wonder if we could create some sort of a, like a shark tick event. Mm. You know, where people bring their ideas before a panel, yeah. and we have a couple of banks in the back room, and somebody says, I'll do that. Oh, I like that a lot. Um, That's cool. It would create a little enthusiasm, yeah. something more than just, a, you know. Yeah. The same services that the, the uh, what's it called, that's SBA. The, is it still SBA? SBDC. SBDC. Yeah, something that would kind of have a, a grab to it. Yes. Do do we have the data on the, the mm -hmm. companies, like how many employees each company has? Not by employee, I don't think we have some some overall statistics right cash. I might not have every place, but quite a few. And how many employees I have? Or Lori had, and I have it somewhere from her. Because I think people like recognize that there's a lot of residents here, but I think if I wonder if people recognized how many people work here, whether they live or sure. you know maybe sure. like you said they don't point. necessarily. Yeah. You know, I'd be curious. Um, we have that number we just talked about. Yeah, the daytime population. population. I, right. my, yeah, Northbrook, Northbrook has about 30,000 people living there. Daytime pop is 65. Wow. Because of all wow. state and underwriter laboratories and all that. So you, you, you've all said, if you don't mind me jumping in here just a little yeah, bit, totally. then I'll run away bravely and let you keep going. But, <laughs> but you're right. You, you, you know, what you guys have all talked about makes sense. So there's retention and there's attraction. And yes, you do want to get CEOs living there. And yes, you want to, as an employer, want people to, you know, enjoy coming to Hampshire and consider living there and living here and, and you know, having coffee or lunch or, or dinner or coming on the weekends. But this, this, what you guys have hit on, this idea of an entrepreneurial ecosystem is critical to your future, whether you're staying static or you're growing. Um, you've got to have... Um, people here or coming here because they know they can start a business and the business will be supported in right. the community. So the entrepreneurial ecosystem, you talked about it in terms of connecting to Elgin is critical, giving people incentives, maybe it's grants or loans, um, the banks in the back room and the shark tank. And one of the uh, a program, and I'll, I'll just add on to it for you because you've touched on Existing businesses and entrepreneurs and colleges and um, and and uh, uh, add in the high school. So the high school has started actually at Barrington High, the incubator program. Yep. And so we're actually involved in two of them, one in Woodstock and one at Oak Park River Forest. Mm -hmm. But starting when kids are actually in high school. So the Shark Tank that you talked about, you could do a dual sort of program for high school students, but also for people who are out in the workforce who want to start their own businesses here and literally make Hampshire the place where you go, you know, to yeah. you know, to find a way to start a business. Um, and money can be uh, found or generated, and it doesn't necessarily have to be huge. So whether it's a grant or a loan and through the competition, um, one of the things uh, in uh, one of the things we're working on in Oak Park is is uh, a pool of money for mission-driven, social mission, socially responsible businesses. 
You don't have to do that here. It could be anything, you know, it could be just pure old profit for God's sakes and helping the community. But in Oak Park, there's that, there's that, you know, sort of mission driven social responsibility thing. So we're working with the community foundation there to set up a program where if you set up a business that has that kind of bent, you can get grants of five, 10 or 50 grand to actually set up your business. So I think you've got the opportunity here and the, 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 the framework and the bones to really do something that nobody else is really doing. And you've got the size of the community where you could literally let everybody, you know, everybody could know and everybody in Finger Grove or Huntley or wherever, Barrington are going, whoa, Hampshire. And again, you're a perfect case in point. Or, you know, you're coming from Barrington and have a company here and it'd be really nice to have people in Elgin and Barrington and Rockford saying, whoa, Hampshire is really right. going on here. And I agree with you. It doesn't have to be enormous, but it has to be cohesive mm -hmm. and coherent. Our school district already has an interview report. Oh, good. Okay. And the one at our local high school is advancing in construction. Good. It's one of the first ones in the state to. That's, uh, that's huge. Certified um, welding. That's huge. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're going to graduate from high school. They already have their yeah. associates to And by the way, that's you know, as you guys know, that's a trend in in sure. you know high school and sec you know secondary education too is the idea that you know it used to you know for forty years it was like go to college, go to college, go to college. Why don't you just start a business, right? Dream big, and we'll help you out. Yeah, no, that's well, good. thank you for that contribution. That was very yeah. good. Um, okay, no, I think those are some serious things that we can because I think that the way to take a good idea and make it successful is to sort of break it down and turn it into something that is sustainable, a program or some kind of you know organized action. Um, uh, and we can divvy it up in chunks. Yes, if without, I mean, and I think what we've proven in our group to this point is um, we can lend some value um, that day to day staff can't sort of do on their own necessarily just because of their burden sure. with other things that they, you know. Um, okay, that's really good. So, a couple of things just to highlight that I liked, and if anybody, if I'm missing anything, remind me. But I really like focus on things that we can control. I think that's very important because we did try to do business recruitment and we learned we don't control them. Um, yes. <laughs> not that we didn't try. We were going to a lot of phone calls. Um, but I like the the the, the, uh, the creative master program um, or business consortium. We bring businesses here in town. I think that's an actionable thing that we can do. I, I really still like that meeting that we had over at. Um, resource bank. I thought that was indicative of our ability to accomplish something like that. That was good. Uh, I like the idea of entrepreneurial coordinating with uh, the SBDC and sort of creating a safe place for uh, entrepreneurs to feel comfortable and sort of helping coordinate, guiding them from the place of entrepreneurs. I think that's something we can definitely work on. The high school incubator thing, I like the fact that we're already doing advanced manufacturing. I know Mrs. Lutz personally from the high school. She is an extraordinary human being. Um, you know Mrs. Lutz? Yeah. Yeah, she, I'm a big fan. Well, I know Lindsay Sharp is in charge of the entire district. She okay, so okay. So we'll see about it. If we have an interest, maybe she could have a program. Yes. And that's right. I mean, in beyond advanced manufacturing and sort of trying to give our, you know, our youth and our people maybe sort of uh, who have, uh, are at a crossroads of life and trying to make choices, um, an easy path to sort of starting and holding a business, which I think comes to the last point is it's not connecting with capital. Because at the end of the day, that's the biggest piece. I mean, what anybody says is getting access to capital, understanding how that works. And it is working. Right. So we have all the types plumbed in to this, but then you know, we get somebody engaged, they can find these assessment plus they can't locate the picture sure. because we don't have somebody that. That's right. And I think it, I think it became a mistake say it's very possible. Programs would be able to assist people with Hampshire funding. That would be better. Because that's what we've done with the stock program. We've done this. Um, certainly, uh -huh. and uh, and at the end, it was proved to be valuable to the village residents that live here. I think proper application of the tax dollar. I think we do the same thing. This, but that, that's not what it is. Does anyone have anything else they want to add? Bill, I know. So I know you give me this. I like this idea. You want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, what, because, why don't you finish the items that you've got? And I'll, I'll bring it up right under 
Uh, okay. Oh, so you're there already. No, I, I am there. Those are the those are the things that I took away from this conversation. What my responsibility going forward would then to sort of craft agenda items that drive us in the direction of these topics. So sort of have conversations and you know, create homework assignments and things that we can sort of do, much like our visit to Dixon, which is uh, mm -hmm. I still think is one of the defining moments of our of our. Thing. So we'll go that direction. Um, Thank you guys for your feedback, especially. Um, thank you, uh, A5. Well, I thank you for allowing me to sit in again. This is this yeah. is uh, it's fantastic for us to hear it again. It's going to go to branding and marketing, right? The four P's of marketing. One of them is product. You have to have product. And if you guys can actually, you know, uh, uh, build this and then define it and then be intentional and act and execute it again, it's going to be something that will define Hampshire for a long, yep. long time. Actually, right? This is a place where if you live, you have the opportunity to grow up and start your own business. Or if you're an adult, you decide to make a change, you can do something here in Hampshire. So um, I think, um, and again, you have the size of the community that where you that can, that can permeate the community, right? And you can also sell that outside the community. Communities that are often larger or more urban you're sort of fighting for for attention here. Here you can be laser focused on it. So good. Okay. All right. That was very very. I wasn't sure where we we're going to go today when we started. That's very happy with what we came up uh, with. So that's awesome. Um, okay. Uh, brochure discussion. Obviously, we are tabling that uh, until uh, the completion. I'm imagining that will probably be a February March topic. Um, Main Street, Susan, you're still kind of holding off, um, and I think that's still wise at this point. Um, number eight, beautification, keeping it on. Um, I'm on their email list, and you are too. Every day I check and see if there's anything in those emails that pertains to us. So, and I send you things. I do, and you do, and I share those, and I've actually shared a few of those things with Jay and with uh, the team. Um, and I think that's something to me is a, a big yeah. part of, uh, and Karen, I'm just to kind of bring you in. Um, one of the things that Main Street had sort of uh, in Susie's presentations um, that she had presented originally, and then furthermore, as we did our training, is the idea of trying to build uh, more coordination with other leaders in town to, to bring them into the mission right. in Main Street so we can sort of see this sort of broader approach. It, it's just, given the you know, situation with COVID at this point, right. the lack of ability to do a lot of events and things like that, I think it's wise at this point to just kind of just keep in contact with it. Uh, which brings us to beautification. <laughs> May we yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for visiting us. Thank you. A uh, quick update on uh, uh, Christina Michelle Salon across the street. Uh, I met with her on Monday evening just to review the scope of the work, and pretty much everything is done. Everything that she committed to do is 100% complete from what I can see. Right. Exterior doors are painted. The masonry work is done. The siding is up. Everything, uh, soffit and fascia has been completed. The last thing that went up was on Saturday, the lighting and the signage went up. Uh, it won't be illuminated just yet. Apparently, the electric has to be finalized on the interior of the building to feed the lights on the outside. Not to mention, she's not going to be in there just yet. So, but from that standpoint, what she set out to do is 100% done. Um, she has, I guess, her final inspections with the new building uh, inspection company tomorrow, Thursday. And then shortly after that, she's going to be submitting her paperwork to the village clerk and or the financial gal uh, for reimbursement. So she is happy. The place looks great. Um, time frame on her in that new building across the street might not be till next year, uh, March or April, about 120 days out, she said, with the amount of work that they have to do to the inside yet um, and the uh, build out that's needed to be done. She'll, she's looking at early next year. So um, we won't see much going on there. And on the inside, there'll be a lot. But anyway, that's the update on hers. Before you go for it, just one day, if I had a nickel for every time someone came up to me and told me how beautiful that building was, I'd have quite a few nickels. So first, tell her thank you for focusing on the outside, because that makes our job easier. Um, before she focuses on the inside, and thank you for coaching and guiding her and getting that project to where it needs to be. I know it wouldn't be where it is without you. Thank you. No, it went very well. She was very resilient in terms of uh, flexible to work with and easy to work with. She was yeah. fantastic. Um, Another uh, facade uh, potential or, or candidate, I did finally go down and talk to Justin Fulbright. I set an appointment, met him on a weekday at about nine o'clock, went down there and sat with him for probably 45 minutes to an hour. 
And he shared with me some things I guess I was aware of, but uh, in terms of thinking directly, uh, it, it kind of enlightened me a little bit. Um, as a new business owner, having taken over that business recently and with the COVID kick in in March, um, he had some challenges when this happened. His, his quote to me was, what have I gotten myself into? No. Um, I felt really bad for him. Uh, but he's moving along, and he, he had to reduce some staff, but they're still plugging along. Um, he's optimistic in terms of moving forward with anything in the building. He's on hold right now because of COVID and obviously the business. Um, he indicated that I guess the state of Illinois was planning on kicking off that intersection project down there at the beginning of this year, but that got put on the back burner because of COVID. Um, he said his understanding is that in the spring they're going to resume the, whatever planning and reconstruction. You guys could probably speak to this. July first, next year. July first of next year. Okay, that's, that's always been the schedule. His his comments were about because I asked him about the sign, I asked him about the parking lot, I asked him about the fence, and he said that's all until the state does their business. I guess they're reconfiguring the culverts out in front that manage the water in that waterway. Uh, it's going to be quite a bit different. He said he, to, he's losing some property, but maybe gaining some. He didn't, he didn't really know, but it's going to be completely torn up out there is what it sounds like. So in terms of his building, um, he's already contracted to have some minor tuck pointing done on the masonry on the outside of it. Um, he said it's not a lot of money. Basically, uh, it's so small. I'm not really worried about it at this point. Um, other than that, he doesn't really have any immediate plans of what he'd like to do with the building inside or out other than maintain it, and he's doing that, and he has the means to do that. Um, beyond that, I conveyed that uh, I suspected that there would be a lot of support if he were to come to this committee or to the beautification committee with a proposal um, that might enhance the building or restore it or improve it, doorways. Um, I guess they're, I don't know if it's, you know, they've got the vestibule in the front of the building, and we didn't really get into it too much, but I don't know if there's ADA issues that might exist. I'm not looking to create any, but um, I'm, I'm confident he's aware of what he'd like to do. But I think at this point, because of COVID and everything else, and just taking the business over, he's kind of on hold for a little while. Okay. Uh, so he was candid, this and it was a very good yeah, discussion. That's great. that's great that you spoke to him. Uh, he's aware of what, uh, what we have to offer to him. And I'll follow up with him at some point, you know, a couple of months, maybe over the winter uh, or in the spring when he, when they reopen. I don't know if they're close down over the winter. But, um, so I talked about the tuck pointing. He, he's just focusing on managing the business right now. And he's on hold on the outside in terms of the parking lot or anything else with the project on Route 72. But, you know, this is somebody that you would refer to Elgin because that service is free as a brand new business owner. All of the services they offer. Mm -hmm. I'll mention that too. And what was the uh, acronym? The the uh, the four letters. Small business development. Susie, do you have a do you have a connection there? Uh, that's Susie. Susie, 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 um, I, I wonder if we could get them to come out here and spend a remote day where they can, uh, people could come meet with them, set them up at, at uh, someplace in the village, and the people come in and do SBDC stuff I, there. That's what I think we should do. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I, I made a note to give Joe a call and see if that's possible. Okay. I suspect they're not real busy these days. SBDC is, they're so busy because of COVID, we have to register for appointment. No, uh, because they're doing all, all the COVID related stuff. But they're free and they do well. It's just, it's an amazing. Uh, uh, here's a name. No, that's not the name. If I find it, I'll let you know. And I'll take that number for you. Probably have to meet it. It is 847 214 7488. Yeah, I will pass that along to Mr. Fulbright. Mm -hmm. That information and in the entity online and, and read their little mission statement or description of what services they offer and provide. Oh, Sarah Troyer, T R O Y E R. She's the director and business analyst at, at, at ECC's SBDC. Got it. I'll pass it along to him, I'm sure. Uh, well, and that's... their website is just belgium.edu forward slash SBDC. 
Got it. Um, the only other items I had potentially on the agenda is uh, down the road when we're ready for it is the wayfinding signage when we get to that point and we're in, the, in a position that there's a need to discuss it further and make some sort of recommendation or proposal. Other than that, we don't have any uh, new applicants on the BDC and the next time we do a whole, uh, have a meeting, I was going to just uh, present this to committee members, it's just a, a guide of some of the murals that some of the municipalities have elected to put up on the sides of buildings and things. You've seen them before. Mm -hmm. um, as a, maybe an additional, you know, the broad side of some of the buildings down there, mm -hmm. the side of the old dollar store I talked about. You know. It's so great. Mm -hmm. They're, They're really fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely on the side of the library is a perfect spot. The first place you can side of the rose garden yeah. maybe. Yeah. 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 So anyway, that's all I had, guys. Okay. okay. Awesome. Bill, thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um so awesome. Thank you, Bill, as always. Yep. And uh, I know that uh, during the next funding uh session, um that uh, I know blocks is very interested. And putting an application. So uh, I've, I've spoken to uh, Jay um, several times about it as well as Sam. Um, so they're thinking, uh, I told them go early because it's, you know, in some sense, the way we work, it's, it, it turns out to be a first come, first serve, the early batch. And so he's planning on coming in April or so, maybe in March and start working with you. So I said, just when you're ready, let me know. Is there any other businesses that we all do? Should be urged that have been. Not that, I mean, we've talked about the obvious ones, right? We've got Palazzolo's, the old hardware store, the dollar store, and uh, Rose Garden, kind of, and then Chicken Dip. Sort of the, but outside of that, I don't know, does anybody else have any other buildings that jump out at us? We'd like to. I know that Ronaldo is selling his building, which is where Dr. Ryan Foster is at, I think. Dr. Foster, that building's for sale. And yeah, they're going to be out there. December 16th. And they're just going to shutter? Yeah. Okay, I, I need to stop by and see them. I think they're so busy. Um, but uh, I don't know of anybody else, Dave. Do you have any thoughts? Mm -hmm. Those seem to be the, it seems to, our east side of the streets. In the, yeah, <laughs> if it could be, you have to look like the west side. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> if somebody buys the Renault. Uh, right, Renault. Yep. Renault. Yep, yep, yep. And Papa Palazzolos is not for sale. He's just sitting on that. He's just sitting on it. Just sitting on it. Sell? That's the problem with. Would he sell it? Would he sell it? I don't think so. I think he bought it so cheap. He's just waiting until the right part. I mean, that's the problem with real estate going for sixty thousand dollars. No impetus to do anything. He's sitting waiting. That's where update on administrative adjudication. I know it's not that anymore. But... Actually, we actually do have something for you tonight. Excellent. Are you ready for that now? I am literally ready for it now. Josh, fire away. All right, you have a hand up. No, I guess I could have made copies of this. Um, so this is an informal report. Uh, we, BNF is not um, responding to, to this very, very well. They're, they're pretty overwhelmed. It's one of the reasons why we transitioned. Mm -hmm. So almost immediately uh, during the transition, I asked our contact, his name is Keith Rooney. He's kind of the field operations director guy. Um, he's been doing a lot of inspections and stuff. I asked him if he could do this, and he himself came down uh, uh, last week, two weeks ago, and did an inspection and just sent me an informal report via email, which Chase making copies of that cites four sections of the International Property Maintenance Code and one section of actually our uh, Hampshire Zoning Code that they're in violation of. Um, oh, this was for the, well, the three that you just mentioned. So. Okay. The old hardware store, yeah, oh, that was in the rose garden. Um, and that's, I mean, it's pretty simple stuff. I mean, basically, it's the exterior of a structure shall be maintained in good repair, structurally sound, sanitary. Um, exterior wood surfaces shall be protected from the elements and decay by painting or other protective measure. Peeling, flaking, chip paint shall be eliminated. Metal surfaces shall be coated to inhibit corrosion. Um, so that's kind of that stuff. And then there's also almost a fire code issue, which is that the addresses are not um, on the building. So it says building shall have approved address numbers placed in a position plainly legible and visible from the street. Um, and that tends to also be a fire code issue because a fire truck needs to be able to see where it's going yeah. or an ambulance. 
Um, and then the zoning code that he cites is the removal of abandoned signs. So if there's not an operational business, then the sign is supposed to be removed. Um, so all of that is very citable. The next step is he's going to send them notification. And then they have, um, I can't remember, I think it's 30 days to correct the situation. And if they don't, he's going to be working uh, directly with Mark Schuster, our attorney, to come up with a, a official citation that can be taken to court. Okay. Yeah. Rather than go through the administrative adjudication, we're just going to take it. The three yes. buildings are. Uh, the addresses are 129. That doesn't tell me. Anything. The Dallas store. I'm sorry. Dallas store. Well, we're going to kind of go easy on Rose Garden. Right. I was going to ask you if you could do that because yeah. they're acting in good faith. Okay. Yep. Do you have contact information for the guy you mentioned in Los Calizos? Uh, no, but Ann, Sam, or Tony, you could get that one. No, so I think he's given to me. Propels well. Oh, oh, so I think members are going Yes, I do have that. I, I want to get, at least make a courtesy call to all three of them before we turn the dogs loose. I think that's a fair idea. Yeah. It's a very good idea. Yeah. But, but do know that we have notified them in the past. This is going to be the first time that I agreed as uh, administrator that you want to do that. Um, okay, I will get that. I'll take it right now. No, no, I know. That, that, that's on my list. Guys, that's where we want that's to get awesome. to. Thank you. That I almost want to punish the champagne. Because, <laughs> um, well, because we can't do anything if you know it, unless, the buildings are unless they choose to. And if they, you know, create this fill out program at 75% funding, you know, we, we go out there, we meet them, we, we create a finding, you know, financing program to where it makes life easy for them to be able to get financing for it. And we've already started doing that, and they still sit there. I sit there and sister. So sometimes you need to you know have yeah. some composure and hopefully this composure will just get because really goal is and hopefully when you do talk to him um, on this goal is that they apply for the facade program i mean truthfully is we just wanted to fix it we're willing to help them but you gotta get moving you know 10 years i think we're well, not 10 years it's been at least what four years for the dollar store has been kind of falling apart three years just looking yeah. terrible and Powell's hole has been there for now four, be four years. the entire time i've been on this board it hasn't been a restaurant yeah, so okay. um so is the adjudication process are you guys still going down that road not right now it's it's rather complex to be honest so you have to have a software to run it you have to have somebody that understands the software it's a it's a pretty big task now if we get to the point where we have you know dozens of or even tens of violations right right now we're only focused on downtown yeah we, we've had a couple complaints out outline areas People have a lot of land, so they kind of take advantage of just making a jump file. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this same code would be enforced there. Um, honestly, I don't think we have the volume of cases um, that some other communities have. Yeah. That's why there's talk about doing it together. Yeah. But there's really no big incentive. There's no big savings. Um, unless we start having having citations like this and then we get to a volume to the point where we're paying a lot of court costs, then we can save those court costs. But is there um do you want to call this something different this is property maintenance code enforcement oh, yeah. this is. It's, not, it's really not administrative adjudication that was a process yeah. but what you really wanted to do was enforce our current code it, that's right yeah it was it was an idea that was presented uh, i don't know it's been uh, 18 months now where i went down that presentation in north aurora and that's what he called it but it was just a way of saying yeah however we get there you know, our goal i think as a commission is to create a little bit of a leader to get these you know business owners a little bit off that center so um and we, we've done a fair amount of research on administrative adjudication um yeah. i participated in a webinar just a couple weeks ago josh can tell you look which communities are as the program is kind of helping uh it's uh Genoa. yeah Genoa. 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 You, yeah, yeah but they share it about they use it so much because they also use it entirely for their parking tickets and everything like that it's mostly the police violations that they use it for yeah Okay, excellent, gentlemen. Thank you so much. That that makes me very excited. Um, so that's cool. All right, Hampshire's very own uh, Jeannie had shared with me that she is struggling getting in touch with Moffitt. Um, I'll be there. Uh, on, uh, okay, can you mention yes. something that because uh, we're going to pull him off the list if he doesn't respond? Yeah. He's reached out several times. Yeah. I've heard about James Moffitt a time or two, and doesn't totally no, stop me. Um, is he there? No. With you? Okay. No. There's, um, she, she's trying to get in touch with James, Dr. Mocker, I should say. I don't think he's there. Because he's got one there. Yeah, he's got two offers. He's got two offers. One. Okay. Yeah. Only 
Yeah, sure. I, I know that. Yeah, because Jeannie says she's hit a wall. She's tried, and they just don't. It. She's trying to get in touch with the owner, yeah. who is Dr. Muffet, and he's not you, getting in touch with find out tomorrow. Okay, yep. Yeah. And then get back to me because I need to get to Jeannie soon. Otherwise, we're going to take them off. So, would they be October? They're going to be October now, yeah. Um, or do we want? Okay. Well, I'm wondering if the village hammer was October. We can do it. She's doing a lot of activities on Facebook. I can get. We just swap one to. Or why don't we just put? We're going to put. Honestly, I was. Jeannie's report was not positive at all. I mean, she had made several attempts with no. Where? Uh, to Moffitt. Yeah. No interest coming back. In my opinion, we'll slide it to the bottom. Yeah. Let's put them at five and move into chamber up. I'll tell her to redirect her efforts. Please reach out to them. We yeah. still want to do yeah. Yeah. Um, Who else? I'd like to add another name to the list. I know we've got. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Because it's at five. Just because you've done. Have you done. Have you done uh, what's his name? Rouse. Randy Rouse and his business? We have not. Pretty good. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. Right here in the, right. Down in the corner. Okay, Randy Ross. You're going to be a terrible business development commission guy. But what is the name of this business? Uh, I don't know. It's, um, I okay, know I don't feel as bad now. Ross and Ross. Something like this. Yeah, that fits. That's great, Sue. That's exactly. Yeah, it was a kind of place. He's not all over the country. I mean, he's really? not local. His business okay. is not all over the country. Okay. No, we know not Royce Place. We've done Royce Place, haven't we? Have we not done Royce Place? Yeah, I did. Oh, last year. Yep. I got this. Yeah. Randy Ross, I'll put six. I'll put Royce with a question mark. I'll look it up. But certainly Royce Place is easy. Yeah. So not, if it has a, I mean, we've already we give nine thousand dollars. Definitely do one of them. Um okay, I like that. So we'll move Vintage Chamber down to five. Well, four technically. Randy Ross. What was it called? Ross's Garage. I love it. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Excellent. Do we have any updates on businesses going on in the village, uh, Mr. Hedges or Mr. Ray, that you want to share? What kind of updates? Anything Anything you things? Tell yeah. us things we don't know. I mean, I mean uh, things coming, development. Or you, coming you said you met with someone on a yeah, recycling um, thing. The, uh, tomorrow night at the village board meeting, there'll be a presentation by. Uh, oh. Uh, Midwest, Midwest, companies. Midwest companies, and they are pretty large um, recycling of construction materials, new construction materials, yes. and they recycle 400,000 or ever a year, separate from the recycling, and they do that with Canadian Pacific Railroad, which are through town here. That's one of the clients. Um, they keep 75% of construction materials out of landfills. This is a big, big thing. Yes. This is a guy who's going to become a real citizen. You know, one of his daughters already lives here. Okay. Uh, he just bought that 78 acre parcel. It's been for sale up on Allen Road for a long time with a mm -hmm. beautiful house on it. Bought that for his daughter. Mm -hmm. Nice for 78 acres. Did you get by these 78 acres? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to give him a call. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> to just a little, little icing on top, he wants to grow organic vegetables on the 78 acres. That's awesome. Um, and that, that property, the 78 acres, is not contiguous to the village anymore. But interestingly enough, the piece of property of 150 acres that he's buying off the Briar Hill Road, immediately north of tracks. So he's he um, borders on the tracks on Briar Hill on the east side, or excuse me, on the west side. There'll be only 18 acres for this new business. And that's north of the tracks. North of the tracks, west of yeah. Across from Ozinga. No, across from Ozinga. Across from Ozinga. Uh, oh yeah, Ozinga's there. Right, right. But north of the tracks. What they do there? Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Four years. Yes, yeah, that kind of pretty. Yeah, but he bought a pie-shaped piece that goes over it and actually is adjacent then or contiguous um, to the 78 acres on Al. Mm. So he will, if he ever wants to, or if we can persuade him to, he could he could bring the 78-acre parcel into the village also. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Jimmy's Sports Bar opened last Friday. We had him over there. They have Amy and a uh, nice guy. I haven't been, had a chance to go over there yet. But, um, they, they stepped in on Friday, Saturday last week. Yeah, that's very cool. nice guy. It, it, they did a decent job. I actually thought it was, you know, I me. Mean, I'm not a huge fan of gaming, um, but I just thought it was going to be an excuse to have gaming. 
But uh, his bar is actually quite nice. I can imagine me and my buddies hanging out there and having a few beers and watching the game. It's not third, just third generation restaurant tour, so he has it in his family. Yeah, it, 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 he did a very nice job. I was, I was and Bruce really was real good too, and that was that was the very first permit that we issued with the company, and they they really hustled over there. They got that really fast. So Fantastic. Um, I can't think of anything other than that. Any even any prospects? So. It's called Ross Gas Pump Garage. Ross. Gas pump. Garage. Well, I tell you what, he uh, he actually helped me to fulfill a promise to a resident, even though I had nothing to do with it. Um, he said, if you get elected on the board of trustees, please do something with that building where there's a tree growing in the center of it. <laughs> and like the first meeting I had, we were approving funding for that building, and I'm like, see, see what happens? See how efficient I am? <laughs> you know what? He got that one behind that. the his place. He got rid of the tree before buying that building. Yeah, he did a fantastic job. Yeah. So if you go down here um, to where that gas pump thing that yeah. most people probably don't know much of what it is, behind that was a building. That building was basically just a mess. We had a tree oh, yeah. going up. There was a fire bay oh, back in the late 90s or something like that, or yeah. in the 2000s. Or video business. Or video yeah. business. Yes. Yeah. 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 When it was on fire, it, it didn't like, short something out. It affected our. Oh, really? I saw an explosion. Yeah, it was before I moved here. I moved here in 2003. I think it happened. We moved here in 95. Before I got it. It's that vacant for years. The village board uh, entertained uh, taking the former owner uh, to court or taking in, stepping in and exercising, I don't know if it's eminent domain or what, but taking the building down. And they went through the whole process, evaluating pros and cons. And that was when I was on board years ago. We opted not to move forward. We ran the risk of potentially of him potentially coming back at us, but it sat then empty for uh, 15 years. It was long, it was terrible, horrible eyesore. But compared to what it looks like now, yeah. Randy did a wonderful job of it. His son redid the masonry on it, picked everything up, fixed it, looks wonderful, a lot better than it did. And it kind of ties in a little bit with oh, this is. gas pump thing, and you know, he rents yeah. a base and stores cars down there now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. I, I mean, that was maybe the first thing I think that got done. Like I said, I, I can't take any credit for that. It was already in the works when I when I'm done the work, but um, yeah, they did a really good job. So. Uh, okay, fantastic. Does anyone have anything? We've gone our on, uh, two hours. Um, I thought we had a great meeting as usual. Does anyone want to add anything else? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> anyone? All right, at this point, I will entertain the motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those in favor, opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you.